Hello, welcome to Elisa Crespo Yoga. I'm Elisa and I'm so happy that you have decided to be part of these 21 days of yoga. You have no idea how happy that makes me. In this video, I'm going to explain a few things that are going to help you to enjoy these 21 days a little bit more or as much as possible. So each session is going to be split into three parts. The first part is going to be a short introduction where we will be reflecting on a different subject every single day. Then we will have the practice and at the end there will be a relaxation which will be about eight minutes long. Now the relaxation is a very important part of our practice so please do not skip that and don't worry about falling asleep because at the end of those eight, eight minutes, I will be guiding you out of the relaxation. Now, we will start the first sessions a little bit softer. And as the days go by, we will be adding a little bit more of intensity to our practice. So the first day we will be introducing, uh, the first days, sorry, we will be introducing Sun Salutation A and Sun Salutation B. And from the sixth or seventh day, we will be repeating both together every day to warm up our body and to really familiarize ourselves with the basics of yoga. This is going to really help you build that confidence when it comes to take to taking other yoga sessions or for the future to be able to take other challenges that I will be uploading in this channel as well. We will also be familiarizing ourselves with other poses that you can find in any yoga class or most of the yoga classes. And it's going to help you feel stronger, lighter and gain more clarity in your mind because we will be doing like an active meditation. So by adapting movement to breath, we're actively meditating because if we are not in the now, if we're not focused on what we are doing, we just can't keep up with the lesson. We get a bit lost. So we have to be in the moment and that's how we actively meditate. Now, I would like to share some tips with you that really helped me with my practice and really helped me to push the practice to the next level. And they are very simple and it might sound silly, but it makes a huge difference. And what happens, especially, it happens a lot later on as well, but especially at the beginning when we start practicing yoga, we tend to compare ourselves to others probably with the person that's guiding us, that's teaching us, without realizing that that teacher, that instructor, ha instructor has probably been practicing yoga for a long time before they started teaching. And so their postures, the way they do yoga is going to look different to the way that we are doing it when we first start. And so comparison is not going to help us at all to move forward. In fact, if we start comparing ourselves with how the pose is looking on the screen and what it looks like when we do it, it's going to create frustration. It's going to bring all those negative thoughts to ourselves about ourselves that we don't really need and that there's no, it's not necessary to be there. So quit comparing yourself to others regardless of where you are, regardless of if you are, if you are in a yoga class or down the street, it's always going to be helpful to quit comparison. And now all the bodies are different. So some people may be able to do certain poses amazingly, but they can't do other poses that other people can do amazingly. And that may come to the different types of bone structures that we all have because they're all completely different and so please don't stress out about that there's no need to and you're all amazing as you are so remember that the next thing is the breath when we first start often we question am i breathing right should i be exhaling should i be inhaling now and the thing is that the most important thing is that you breathe as long as you breathe 
that's fine. Like everything else is going to come with time. So with practice, we will feel more comfortable and we will realize about when we have to breathe, when we have to, sorry, when we have to inhale, when we have to exhale, but that will naturally come with your practice. So don't stress out about that. So one worry less. Another thing is try to avoid eating, eating two hours before. Yoga is recommended to be, to be done with an empty stomach. And it's because we are moving in many ways, especially upside down. So it's going to be really uncomfortable to be practicing yoga if you have eaten. So I really encourage you to avoid eating at least two hours before your session. So if you're really hungry, you can have an apple or a little tea. But yeah, that's another tip. Another one that I really discovered by experiencing it and it was not enjoyable at all was applying lotion to my body, especially hands and feet. Avoid doing this, especially if you're having a shower before doing your yoga session because it's going to be like sliding through an ice ring. Not enjoyable. Then it's really important that you really feel your body when you're practicing yoga. It's not about feeling pain. We Yes, we are working the muscles. Yes, we are stretching them, but it shouldn't be painful. There's a difference between feeling that something is working and that we are pushing it and a deep pain in your knees, in your spine or hips. We don't want to feel pain. So if there's pain, adapt your, po your pose however you need to. There's no such thing as right or wrong, but about what feels good with your body. And the last one is if you can try to set up your mat in an area, in a space where you're going to have a quiet time for yourself, when nobody's going to be able to disturb you. And if you can light up a candle and dim the light a little bit, then that's just going to be the cherry on the top. I've also created this calendar where it tells you which theme we're going to be focusing on every day in terms of what we're going to be reflecting on. So if you haven't got it, please feel free to message me. I'll happily send it to you anytime. I will also save it on the highlights on my Instagram profile. So you can just screenshot it from there anytime you like as well. Now, the whole purpose behind creating this calendar is to support each other. So a challenge is a, is a challenge. It's called a challenge for a reason. And having that discipline to commit to doing that thing every single day, be it yoga or be it running or be it whatever challenge, challenge we do, it's hard if we don't have the discipline, if we have never done it before. So I encourage you highly to share that calendar on your Instagram story. Take the day that you have done, tag me, because I'll be really happy to see that you're doing the challenge. And also I can share it on my Instagram. So I can share all the people that are doing it. And so you can see how many people are doing it and support each other, feel that we together can do this. Everything that I do in this channel comes from love and passion and effort to be able to help as many people as possible out there. So if you would like to support the channel somehow, please give a thumbs up, give a like, share, share it with whoever you think that could benefit from this as well. And if you feel like you would like to donate anything, any help is welcome. Every little counts. You can do it via PayPal to this um, email below it's easy yoga classes at gmail.com i'm so thankful that you have decided to take this challenge thanks for trusting me thanks for doing this with me and i will see you on the mat shortly take care bye